You know, if I go back maybe 1995 uh, when I had joined a company called International Travel House. So my first thing was to get into the mice department of outbound tours. So the first time I realized the power of bidding. And since then, you know, my journey with Cox and Kings for 10 years, uh, I, I did huge mice movements. I think must be every month, maybe 30 to 50 mice groups, that kind of a business. Uh, moved into SOTC. There also, I was heading, there was a national head of SOTC. One name which never left me, whenever I go for any bidding, is our dear friend who's there with us today. A great personality. If you look at him on the uh, on his social media handles, you can see the sense of fitness, a sense of uh, family man, dogs, animal lover, always talking. And recently I was with a few of our friends there. They said, you know, one day this gentleman sent a mail. I don't know if it is true, but I think it should be true that this gentleman sent a mail to the team saying for few days we will not take more business because 100% of thousands of people are all busy doing work. Can you imagine? With this, a great round of applause for my dear friend, mentor, great personality. line line एकदम धुंधर है और और बड़ा मजेदार सा इनका व्यक्तित्व है जब भी किसी से मिलते हैं प्यार से मिलते हैं आप साथे में देखेंगे अपने जूनियर एग्जीक्यूटिव के साथ घूमते हुए मिलेंगे आपको नो एयर अबाउट नवीन कुंडू दैट ही इज़ दी यू नो आई विल नॉट से व्हाट ही इज़ दैट्स हर जॉब बट आई Please, may I welcome you, Mr. Naveen Kundu. Please, a great round of applause for Naveen. Mr. Naveen, you know, I am such a multifaceted personality, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me a few minutes um, Thank you. to introduce him formally. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mr. Naveen Kundu, a result-oriented achiever, focused on achieving results in highly competitive environment as an energetic entrepreneur whose quest to customer service is his ikigai. Two times National Tourism Award winner, a highly qualified leader offering more than 30 years management experience within the tourism, travel, and hospitality industry. A business management graduate from University of uh, Mysore in marketing management and financial planning. He had, been, had come a long way, uh, started working with the international organizations like Choice Hotels International Inc. USA for seven years, and he worked for American hotel chain Best Western International. And Navin understood the dynamics of hospitality and tourism industry very early on, his, on in his career, and knew that tourism development was poised for a phenomenal growth in India. And that was when Leisure Corp was born. Leisure Corp was set by Naveen in 1998 with a desk and a telephone connection with a capital of just $500. Gradually, it became a most admired company in India in the field of sociality, travel, mice, sports, travel, luxury trains, business travel, and film tourism. Leisure Corp was acquired by NASDAQ, listed Ebex Inc. in 2018 after it completed 20 years of excellence. He is currently the managing director and CEO of to establish Ibix Cash Travel Group in India, Middle East, and Southeast Asia. He is also the chairman of Mice and Business Travel Committee of uh, Federation of Indian Chamber of Commerce and Industry and Board of Member of India Convention and Promotion Bureau. An amateur runner, he has participated in 50 plus half and full marathons. And to his credit, ladies and gentlemen, he has been awarded with National Tourism Awards winner 2011-2012 MICE, 
White Pages Most Influential Leader of Travel Industry in Asia, Wow Awards winner Gold and Silver for Mice, today's Traveler Award winner for Best Mice Operator, and Brands Academy Award for Best Mice Operator. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Mr. Naveen Kundu, the Managing Director, Ebix Cash Travel Related Services. And uh, he's going to be talking on the resurgence uh, rising India advantage India. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. I think a round of applause to the lady. She's been doing a good job since yesterday. And we all know that in the business of mice, if the MC is not a great MC, the event doesn't really kick off very well. So she's really done a good job. Give it to her. Uh, Vikas, thank you very much. I think you've overwhelmed me. I mean, I'm really overwhelmed with the kind of uh, uh, introduction you've given me. I'm never, never, ever, I don't know whether I'm worthy of it. Uh, I have always been a person who believes in trying harder than working harder. But uh, really, thank you very much. I am overwhelmed with this entire intro that you gave, uh, gave about me. You know, all of you need to understand one thing. In the previous session, when I saw a few countries sitting down here and talking about India and the Indian market, what really makes me very happy is that all of them consider Indian market a very important market for them and the go-to market for them. And if we have to believe anything, if Moscow Tourism Board has come here and given a presentation about Moscow, let me tell you, it's not very easy to get Russians and Russian people talking about very great, what was not considered to be a very great market. In 1990, when I started my career and when I started my business in 1998, most of the hotel chains were not available in India. Most of the tourism boards were not in India. Uh, leave alone DMCs coming to India and leave alone attractions coming to India. What has suddenly changed in the last 20 years that India has become such an important market? We all know that we've gone through a great amount of economic transformation, but how has the transformation taken place? And Forums like NEMA, and I must, I must really congratulate NEMA for, 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 for taking out this initiative of NEMA because there was nothing, there was nothing available in the space of mice in, in, in India. And bringing NEMA to a city like Amritsar, you know, is, is a huge amount of responsibility you're showing towards the mice industry in India. So if you have to understand and believe the resurgence of India, you have to understand what has made this transformation possible. I will take you through a few things, but before that, I'll tell you. A song was in 1970, the whole Pachim. You talk about numbers, millions of dollars, billions of dollars. We talk a lot about these numbers. Dashamlo diya mere bharat ne, mere bharat ne, mere bharat ne, dunya ko tab ginti aai. Deta na dashamlo bharat to, यो चांद पे जाना मुश्किल था धरती और चांद की दूरी का अंदाजा लगाना मुश्किल था सो प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड वी गिव जीरो वी गिव जीरो टू द वर्ल्ड वी गिव आर्यभट्टा एंड रामानुजम टू द वर्ल्ड हु गिव द एल्गोरिथम्स ऑन व्हिच द होल टेक फॉर्म्स टेक प्लेटफॉर्म्स आर बेस्ड आउट ऑफ टुडे एंड एंड व्हाट इज दिस वी डिड वी वी आर द ओल्डेस्ट कंट्री विद द यंगेस्ट पॉपुलेशन वी आर अ पॉपुलेशन व्हिच इज एवर ग्रोइंग बट Nobody has really understood or realized that India focused always on one thing. While the world was building brands, India was building human resource capital. So today, if any transformation has happened, it has happened because India developed into a human resource capital of the world. So every indicator of economics that you, that you hear, and I'll take you through a few figures, is only possible because India became the human resource capital of the world. All the BPOs that have been set up in India in the last 10, 15 years have all been possible because India was able to provide the English speaking population to all the global MNCs. Mind you, 125 million people is an English speaking population in India, which is just second to the US, which is, you know, which is about 180 million. So India has produced most number of English speaking people, despite their degrees or education, 
So BPO set up their shop in India. We became the back office capital. All that, in, all that encouraged the world to come and invest in India. I will take you through a number. Out of 500 Fortune companies, 250 Fortune 500 companies have Indian CXOs. And the balance 250 have Indians at the middle and the senior management globally. Top 20 companies, CEOs in India, are, uh, top 20 companies have Indian CEOs today. So we have exported human capital. We export 30 lakh people every year out of India who qualify in India and go and over affluent countries moving into recession. Their growth rate is going to be projected at less than 2%. India's growth rate is projected between 6 to 11% depending on the month of production, agriculture and everything. Do you, do you understand what it means for a large economy like India? Third, Indian, the world economy in the last 10 years grew by 35%. 15% was India's share. 15% of that was India's share. Out of the three large economies, I mean India is right now the fifth largest economy, we have recently beaten our favorite nation, the Great Britain, in terms of uh, you know, superseding them in the economic indicators. But out of the three large economies in the world, India this year will have a total accumulated economic output of $400 billion, and by 2028, $500 billion. The projection that India made that we will be a $5 trillion economy by 2030, if we have to believe the numbers, we will achieve that by 2028 because of the strong leadership that this country has. For your interest, because you, all of you are in the outbound travel, almost all of you are in the outbound travel, and the people who have come from overseas to target this market, 25 million Indians have a per capita income in India of $35,000 and above. This figure is going to double by 2028 and we will have 50 million people with a household income of over $35,000. That is going to be the size of the economy who will be traveling globally overseas spending that kind of money. You know, India will produce this year $16,000 million of outbound travel spend. $16,000 million of outbound travel spend this year. Between 25 to 40 million people will travel overseas. And 5,000 million of that is going to come into MICE and special interest events. 5,000 million. Please gear up. You don't know what's going to come to you. You have no idea what's going to hit you. Whatever businesses you are managing, multiply it by 10 this year. Just get ready to go after the human resources because they are the ones who will be very difficult to find because the whole world is taking away human resource from us. You know, uh, all this, what I'm talking about, will have more relevance when I say, how many of you have tracked this? I don't know. In 75 years of Indian independence, the total FDI that we got in India, foreign direct investment, was $950 billion. In the last eight years, out of 950, $532 billion have come in the last just eight years. And when the world was fighting pandemic, and they were fighting for their survival, that is the year we got the maximum FDI in India of $83.5 billion in 2020. And we got this entire investment across 67 sectors in 31 states and union territories. What does this figure mean? What does this, what does this mean? This figure means that India is becoming manufacturing capital. India is becoming energy capital. India is becoming a human resource capital. Somebody recently, uh, there was an Invest India talk, said this is the most unprecedented transformation that has happened in the free world. Ladies and gentlemen, give India a big round of applause. It is the biggest, it is the unprecedented transformation that has happened in the free world that has happened in India. So 
everybody has to look at India very seriously. You know one thing that how do we now talk about what's going to what everybody will say ye to theek hai ye sare figures to theek hai lekin isme mere liye kya hai is pure is pure is pure economic indicators hai all these economic indicators you know highlight one thing that indian corporates indian public indian uh, market as such will generate the maximum tourism output over the next 5 years so till 2030 you will see 50 million people traveling overseas or within india and out of which the lion's share is going to be mice mice is going to be the the biggest share and when i say mice i say basically experiential travel which includes weddings and events meetings and events sports travel let me let me take you back but in 2010 when a study was done about the sports travel industry in india it was pegged to be the you know we had only 2.5% market share that we were contributing to the sports travel in 2020 the same thing went to 4% in 2015 do you know what happened with fifa recently in qatar india was the third largest market contributing 40% of that share the total output for fifa india was ex india was expected to generate 40 million dollars on of just the ticket sales hospitality sales we generated 150 million dollars of ticket and hospitality sales in qatar in the recently gone fifa world cup that is the sheer resurgence that we are talking about india this transformation is unprecedented i am sure most of you who were managing your companies from 2010 onwards or 2008 onwards must have seen spectacular growth and more so almost a 100% growth last year you know kiran was recently telling me and, and I, i heard kiran bandari talk about that india is resilient and we were we almost came out of covid very quickly more than everybody else in the world now please understand there is a method to this when covid hit us the whole world said indians will be dying on the roads i'm sorry but that's what every they they said that harvard will do a study on the number of deaths in and in india in you know 65% population of india was supposed to get covid and th they were saying that 10% of them will die we had just one laboratory testing pcr having a pcr test in pune in 2020 march in 3 months time we had 450 laboratories they became 5000 laboratories in next, in the, in, the, in one year we are the cheapest we still provide the cheapest rt, RT pcr test in the world under 5 dollars when the world was when the world was seeking help from america and uk for moderna and pfizer india had the had the had the determination and the and the and the and the and the share you know um, intention to produce their own vaccines they produced five vaccines 2 billion doses have been inoculated to 1.4 million for 1.4 billion indians that was possible again through the human resource when the tenacity of tech that we created met the audacity of the bureaucracy india fought covid so 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 beautifully that all of you sitting today here experiencing this growth is all because india was resilient and ladies and gentlemen i am talking hard facts and figures i am these figures don't come from from my house they are they are, they are available uh, the data is available uh, in the in the public domain so please understand where is a nation like india in the world today इकबाल ने ठीक ही कहा था ना सारे जहां से अच्छा हिंदुस्तान हमारा हो गया ना वापस आ गए हम वहां पे राइट सो फ्रॉम हेल्थ ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन टू इकोनॉमिक ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन टू ह्यूमन कैपिटल ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन टू मैन्युफैक्चरिंग एंड एनर्जी एनर्जी ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन इंडिया हैज गॉन थ्रू एवरी ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन लुक एट यू नो आई डोंट नो आई मीन अलॉट ऑफ पीपल आर ऑफ माई एज एंड अबाउट नॉट दैट आई एम वेरी ओल्ड बाई बाई दट या In a 
in a UN assembly, there was a question about India once upon a time saying, this nation has increasing population and a very, very lousy infrastructure. It was not long back that we were critiqued as a nation with ever growing population and very poor infrastructure. If we have to talk about transformation, converting a weakness to a strength and a threat to an opportunity, my dear friends, this 1.4 1, 1 billion people became an opportunity, it became a strength because they are increasing consumption in India. That is why Raymond is sitting here, Kiran Bandari is sitting here, Moscow is sitting here, all tourism boards are sitting here because they want a pie of this 1.4 billion people. So this population became a strength. The infrastructure, that poor infrastructure we were talking about, all the FDI came. The whole world saw that as an opportunity to invest in India and to make money. So the entire world came and said, we'll partner with you and we will build this infrastructure. So the weakest, the, the weakest link of India infrastructure became its strength. So as they say in SWOT analysis, convert a weakness into a strength and a threat to an opportunity and, and your product is going to be a well-marketed product and that is what has happened to India. 38 kilometers of road we are laying every day, 9.5 kilometers of rail network every day. India is poised to open another 80 airports in the next two years, making it over 210 airports, out of which 51 will be international airports. Do you understand what it means? 427, 427 planes order given by Air India recently, 1100 pl planes order given by India recently by between, between Indigo and other, all other carriers, which means India is going to get in the next three years another 1,520, 1,627 planes. We already have 860 planes. Our market size demands 2,000 2, planes, but we will get over 2,200 planes. That means we are going to not want double, but not triple. Our, our airline traffic will increase five times over the next three years, five times. Do you understand? Five times. It'll increase over the next three years. Airbus and Boeing are both talking to set up an assembly line in India. Could you ever imagine Airbus and Boeing talking about setting up an assembly line in India? They've already signed a joint venture for 20,000 crores between Gujarat government, Tata and and Airbus to set up the military airline aircraft production in India. Who had heard of this 20 years back? When we were, when everybody was saying that you are a pop, you are a, a nation of ever increasing population and a very poor infrastructure. Look where what's happening to India today. It is only possible because the leadership that has shown the intent to develop this nation. I'm not being political, please don't get me wrong, but we have to appreciate the current leadership for where India is. <laughs> they have shown the intent that they will make decisions. Look at what they have done to UPI and Aadhaar. In a Twitter of a second like this, 2,348 UPI transaction happen in India. In one second, just a second, in one second, we have 2,348 UPI transactions happening. In a month, we generate a total output value of $150 billion on a UPI. The world can't even imagine the amount of money that is being moving on the UPI today. 86% of our GDP is now digital. In a, in, a, in a country of parallel economy where cash was king, today 86% of the GDP is generated through uh, digital transactions. I'm sure a lot of you must have come here without a cash because you have the cash in the mobile phone today. Am I right? How many of you are using UPI? Look at that. Look at the transformation. So this was about resurgence India. I will now talk a little bit about, about all this, what does this mean for the mice industry? Mice industry, 
you know, we all know there was no focus of mice in India 20 years back. Perhaps the word mice was not non-existent. It used to be it used to be a part of group travel. Group karna hai. Leaders like Vikas, a lot of people sitting in this room, they knew how to transform the business. They built the mice industry in India. All of you, by the way, have have contributed immensely. And there is another Vikas here from Vida. There are a lot of people here who have really, really contributed in the growth of this sector in India. And the amount of, you know, focus the current government has, they may not be directly talking about it, but because I sit as a chairman of the FIKI Tourism Committee for Mice and Business Travel, I can tell you that if nobody's focus, but the Prime Minister's focus is very clear, he has to make India the most favored mice destination of the world. It is only in this regime that you have thought of making bigger convention centers like a Geo World Center or Pragati Medan becoming a convention center and a foundation has been laid for a lot of convention centers. And as we are in Nima, sitting and talking about mice, there is the largest mice event happening in the India. G20 Foreign Minister Summit is happening parallelly in Delhi at the moment. Who had heard that India will attain presidency of G20 and showcase India as a mice destination? Who had heard of this 10 years back? Nobody. I only wish that the torch bearers of the hotel industry in India from uh, and I, I don't mind taking names from Taj to ITC to Obroy had a vision to not just build hotels. Had they built large convention centers in India, they had taken that kind of uh, initiative. India would have been at the forefront of the mice in the world today. Unfortunately, that was not to be. I remember I used to tell Camelia Punjabi when she used to head Taj, saying that every morning that you wake up, you only have one, th one thing to think about, how to trouble the travel agents of this country. If you spend that energy in making convention centers, you, you will not have to put your energy into that. So if those torch bearers had thought even remotely of, of making five or six good convention centers, like everybody set up hotels in Goa, or in Delhi, or in Jaipur, but nobody had this, in, this, this will to even think about making convention centers in India. I mean, if you look at, I mean, Jagdeep was telling me that if you look at the tourism, uh, the MICE policy that has come in, Amritsar does not feature, Amritsar does not feature in the, in the list of MICE destinations in India. Now, that is where NEMA comes into place. And I feel all of us need to not just only strengthen NEMA between all of us. We also need to go back. Speak to every travel company. I don't call myself travel agent, by the way. I call myself travel company. And I tell the corporate, if he, if he calls us a vendor, I say, please, I'm walking out. Don't call us a vendor. We are supposed to be your experiential partners. So when you go back, please tell your corporates to call you experiential partners and not vendors. So, you know, we have to strengthen forums like NEMA. They have taken a very, very, very noble initiative of giving voice to the mice industry. There are, there are places there are associations like IATO, TAI, TAFI, Editoy, OTAI. They all talk about the industry as large. Nothing wrong in that. We need more associations because we don't even have a regulatory status in this country. But we must appreciate that NEMA has had that, had, had that will and determination and the intent to project the importance of mice in this country. And we all need to strengthen NEMA. NEMA will need to be strengthened, and I'm extending my full support personally and from my company to NEMA, and so should all of you. NEMA will have to also have a very clear action plan. As they say, discussions have to lead to decisions. So we need to sit down, all of us, after this forum, there has to be a, a kind of a brainstorm that has happened where we can actually list down some actionables. For example, I was talking to somebody the other day and they said, you know, everybody talks about this bird called IATA, IATA. And I tell IATA that you're the most biased body in the world. You only want to protect the interest of the airlines. You don't want to protect the interest of the agent. But when airline goes bankrupt, like a Kingfisher and Jet Airways happened, whatever may be the reason, none of the agencies were returned their money. But if, an, if something goes wrong with an airline, you come out, go after the agents, and 
collect money and protect uh, the ally. Now, this needs to be addressed. Nobody's addressing this. We need to go to the hotels and talk about that they need to understand and build a camaraderie with the MICE organizers in India and offer them credit support. Bankers are bankers have given a negative profile to travel and tourism industry. If we have to extend a bank guarantee to somebody, we have to we have to have it backed by a hundred percent cash guarantee. Why would I want to give a hundred percent cash guarantee when the same the same entrepreneur in a different industry has to pay only twenty five percent? So Nima needs to put that into into, into an actionable plan and needs to go to the banks, needs to go to the hotels and say, look, offer credit to them. What's wrong in it? Not everybody's going to take your money away. We have to have ease of doing business. Today, all the operators, the MICE operators today are struggling. On one side, they can't issue more airline tickets because the bank guarantee capping is now there. The amount of bank guarantee you have, you have to issue tickets based on that. So, more responsibility. So, you are going to be the torch bearers for the mice industry in India. And I'm glad, as I said, that I'm glad something like a Nima has happened to India. And, and this was something which was my brainchild, and I thought I'll do, it, I'll do that once I retire. But you've already done it, and congratulations to you for that. But please understand that we need to strengthen Nima if we need to strengthen ourselves. Ladies and gentlemen, get up and give yourself a round of applause because you are sitting in a market which will witness an unprecedented growth over the next five to seven years. You have no idea what is going to come to you. I wish I was 20 years younger and I would, I would see another 20 years of good business happening in India because, because India is going to be the most affluent, aspirational, and an opulent market of the future of the world. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm open to any questions if you have. I guess no questions? Yeah, any questions, please? Sir, if I can ask you the first question. Oh, I sure. Start with. So, uh, as uh, small and medium businesses, small and medium mice agencies, which a lot of us members are, with large aspirations, how do you think we should prepare ourselves to be part of this growth and maybe better the growth rate that, you know, the industry or the economy overall will see? But if, if the economy is going to grow at 9%, 10%, how can we grow at 20%? How can we prepare ourselves for that growth? 20% is a very, very small, small figure for you. You guys need to, because the SME sector in India will grow at more than 25 to 40%. So only one thing is collaborate to cooperate. The only problem with our industry is we have very limited collaboration and cooperation. I was speaking to our Commerce Minister recently, Mr. Piyush Goel, and I sat with him for an hour. And I told him, I said, even this budget is a bit, while I have spoken a lot about this budget, that it's a good budget, tourism has been given its due this for the first time, we don't feel like an orphan sector anymore. But what I told him was one thing. I said, look, you need to do something about creating an industry, and a big industry out of this, because we contribute so much to your growth. Do you know what he said? He said, Naveen, we will do anything possible for tourism because this is the Prime Minister's vision. But first, you will get together. He says, first, you get together. He says, every association president comes to me and talks a different language. <laughs> every industry president comes to me and talks a different language. Now, what do we do? Hotel association is talking a different language. Thai is talking a different language. Ayato is talking a different language. Taffy is talking some language which really nobody understands. So, 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 you know, they have to first understand, are they a travel agent, Federation of India, Association, what are they? So the problem is that you need to first, all of you need to get together. And let me tell you, MICE is not going to be a business of large companies in India. Large companies are not going to get a bigger market share out of the mice business that will grow in India. It is only the smaller players who are going to get it. You have to understand that mice is an experiential business. It demands a lot of, lot of personalization. So the customer satisfaction will not come from commoditizing mice. Like large companies commoditize mice. Like corporates have started commoditizing mice, but very soon they will realize it is 
it has to be customized, not commoditized. But so the major portion of the Indian mice and the global mice is only going to fall in the kitty of small and medium conference organizers like yours and mine and everybody else's. But for that, we have to cooperate and collaborate. We don't have to always compare. So there are these three C's. Do understand, I don't know, I'll give you an example. You know how various industries in India have grown? It is because people like Anand Mahindra, Ratan Tata, Goenkas, Birlas, uh, you know, uh, Bharatiyas, please understand they are, they set the very fabric of the economic growth in India, not the multinationals. Because they never worked at their own company levels, they worked at the industry level. We have to all stand up and work at the industry level. We don't have to work at company levels. Because if industry will benefit or industry will increase, then company will increase. So don't go after existing market shares. Increase the size of the bread, the size of the cake. And that size of the cake is available. Everybody is trying to go in these seven cities and marketing themselves. Go to other 70 cities. Where, who's there? How many mice players are sitting out of Amritsar and doing mice? You think people from Amritsar don't travel in groups and don't travel, don't have incentives? They will eventually have to come to Delhi and things, and they make business more competitive then. So collaboration. You have to you have to you have to partner. And this, by the way, happens very flawlessly in US. In the United States. A corporate cannot, if they float an RFP, they don't float an RFP for comparing pricing, no. They they float an RFP to finalize and shortlist their mice company, and then they ask them to, okay, this is what I want to do, and they go on a cost plus management model. That's the actual regulatory norm in USA. You guys have to stand up to do that in India. You don't have to say, sir, wo nahi karega, main kar Mere ko aata hai karna. That's the problem. You all have to sit down, and that is where I say Nima needs to play a very active role. To set the standard operating processes for this industry, and create that fabric and mechanism for everybody else to follow, and things will happen. Hi, Naveen. I am Sanjay Kothari, just from India's Calcutta. I am doing miles for last 25 years. I was heading the SOTC in East India before I started my company. Uh, the biggest challenge that mice players are facing in the current scenario is the credit expectations from the corporates, particularly the small and medium sized tour operators like me, Vinayak and so many other companies. Now, if you go down history, you will see that there was a Fox and Kings which gave phenomenal credit to the market and ultimately they collapsed. And the same thing is happening after the COVID as well. Again, we have resurgence of a few companies which are giving unlimited credit to the corporates, which is not ethical, which is not fair in our industry. We know that we all play on very, very, very thin margins. So when you say that we need to collaborate, in reality, we are not doing it. And where do you see a possibility of collaborating when we have this kind of an unethical competition among ourselves? See, that's what I said just now. There should not be credit in mice and business travel. That should be a no-no. That should be a no-no. But everybody, everybody has to stand up together and do it. Let me tell you what I have done in my company recently. From September 2022, when I saw a whole lot of, when I finished two quarters of last business, because till March it was all dull. April onwards everything picked up. In two quarters when I saw that, you know, uh, it's, it's just, it's just non unstoppable. The business is just, everybody's just going in after the business. And then, then I looked at my finance book and I said, no, there's a lot of credit that's gone and sort of stop it. Credit should not be given at all. The first and foremost thing we should do is, we all should willfully get up and write to the corporate saying that I am not going to extend credit no, no, to you. Here, here, One minute, here, let me finish. I am not going to be a bank to you. For credit, you go to bank because you have, you're an industry. You're an industry, you have credit available from banks. You, you get credit from the bank. Problem is, today bankers are not supporting you because, because tourism is a negative profile. Even after COVID, it's a negative profile. Bankers are not giving you any credit. There are no cash credit facility available. You have to issue tickets at 100% cost today. 
you have to pay money to all the hotels and over DMCs overseas or within India because nobody is extending your credit. Th that's the problem. The same hotel chain goes to a corporate and offers them credit, but they don't offer a credit to a MICE operator, even if a MICE operator sh assures and gives a letter of credit from the corporate. So the problem is that we all have to stand up. The bigger companies have to first come together. And I am, by the way, doing that in the FIKI and talking to everybody. In business travel, I must tell you that the first meeting that we had, large companies today, I will not name them, got together and said, we will not offer credit in business travel. So you will see, uh, letters have already gone. I said, the way you have to conduct your business, you're welcome. You want to undercut, you want to burn your money, you want to see 10 years from now that I will make money, 10 years from now, let me make my customers. You're welcome. That's your business decision. But policy decision is, don't offer credit. No, but you, uh, we see, don't need to offer credit. You have yourself said right now, see, we are having a fair discussion. Because we need to have some intense discussion and that is the purpose of this forum. You have yourself said that in September you noticed that there's a huge credit with the corporates and you put your peg down. The problem with mice industry is that the buyer is so big in comparison to the vendor that either you accept his term or you walk out because there are others who are giving credit. So how does NEMA as an association help? Because again, participating in these forums is a different business ballgame altogether, but actually framing policies and making sure that MICE players, your members actually follow them and be honest to each other. How do you build a synergy is something which is very challenging because I have handled Tata's and Ultratex and literally almost every corporate in my life. We have to bow down to their conditions or we have to walk out. Again, as I said, so do you know there's an association called EMA, Event Management Association, you know? You know what, what EMA did? And, and, and that's commendable what they did. They first and foremost got event companies together and said, if you want to be a part of our forum, I mean, the forum became bigger. There are operating processes you have to follow, which is minimum 80% advance before event execution, 20% on immediate execution. They also followed a practice of a 10 to 15% management fee surcharge on the BOQ that the corporate gives. Now, how is it that the same corporate follows that practice with an event company, but they don't follow the practice with the MICE company? Why is it that? Because you have to, one minute, Fine, let's not talk about unity right now because I'm, that's not a forum that we're discussing. We're discussing resurgence India, so we'll talk about resurgence India, but he has a valid point, but for that, you yourself, along with everybody else, have to go together in your market, or all of us here have to, have to get up and take, a, take an oath saying that, look, I may conduct my business at any cost I want to. That's your business decision. You want to lose money, you want to make money, how much money you want to make, that is up to your entire business book, you know, that'll sp your business plan. But Credit is a policy thing. Credit should be, everybody should get up and say, we are not going to offer credit. That is the easiest thing to do. NEMA can issue a guideline. People who are in the members should follow that guideline. But as I said, where there are discussions, there have to be decisions. And those decisions have to be followed in practice. So we have to have that practice. The fair practice. See, if the government ka regulatory, if, I, if we had a regulatory or a tourism council of India, which I have been... Uh, knocking at the government and the doors of the government for a long time that if you don't want to give us a regulatory body, give us a council. Because this is exactly the problem that the industry is getting credit from banks. They're also getting credit from vendors. So they're sitting this huge cash all the time. And we as an industry are a negative profile with the banks. And then the corporate also wants to uh, us to give credit. That's not fair. That's not fair. We are not bankers. So if you all get up and tell the corporate, that we are not going to be your bankers. We are not your bankers. We will not give you credit. We will give you a performance guarantee. That's fine. You have to stop 10% of money. Don't stop money. You have to give a performance guarantee. Give a bond. But that's it. Yeah. But the practice has to be there. And you have to have that strong will to do it. Hi, Naveen. My name is Shwetang. I'm from Rainbow Vacations, Jaipur. Uh, I got a quick question to you. One is the burning issue which you also mentioned for human resource in the industry and the kind of resurgence we are looking at in new coming years. How do you suggest to us that what can, you know, how do you tackle, how do we tackle that kind of human resource requirements and uh, so that we get industry ready people to work with us 
And uh, in a second question is, of course, oh, what's your take on this new 20% TCS coming up? Hopefully, it doesn't come up, but yeah, it's already proposed. So there are two questions to it. So if I if I correctly understood, you have two questions. Question number one is human talking about the human resource, how to fill the gap of the human resource, and the question number two is TCS. Yeah. So let me address your first question. Uh, look, there is there is there is a hum there is a skilled human resource shortage in mice industry today. For that, again, associations have to get together and all of us have to get together and go and give presentations to the business management and the graduate schools of this country. Because I can tell you, 75% of these institutes won't even know what mice is all about. They will relate mice to a mice. You understand? <laughs> so. So we have to educate them that this is the industry because it's the most e important contributing inclusive economic indicator today. Uh, it'll happen, it is happening, but as I said, while there are academies in India, so TBO has an academy, there are other tribal academies in India, they're also not, they're now, now you will see the courses on event management and mice management happening. So it's a process, as I said, the way things will grow, more education will grow, there, there will be, the day is not far, when you will see a graduate program in mice management coming to India. And for that also, for that also associations like NEMA have to get together and do that. The second part of your question is, uh, so, so after, when, when I answer that question, I will be beaten by all of you outside. <laughs> I know that because I was the only one who was for this tax, not against this tax. Because, as I said, I don't look at the economy of India from the lens of a travel company. I look at the economy of India from the lens of an economist. Please understand, India is a growing and a developing nation. Our forex reserves need to be spent more carefully on building more exports out of India. So whatever Otherwise, we'll run into a huge balance of payment situations. So anybody who's read economics will understand what is the BOP balance of payment situation. It is like when your forex, which is coming into India, is, is, is lower than the forex going out of India, you run into huge BOP. It's called the, it's called the, it's called the balance of payment fiscal deficit. India right now, because it's growing, today they want to keep all these forex reserves for the industry which actually generates, which actually imports and generates goods and services to be exported so that they are able to improve the situation of the forex reserves into the country. They can't allow, in a situation we are in, leisure travelers, wedding people, to spend on aspiration that hard earned forex that's come from industry. Because eventually that forex goes out of the country. India, unfortunately, is a country where incoming travelers are just about close to 8 to 10 million, but outgoing travelers currently are 25 million, expected to be 40 million by next year, 50 million by 2028. So imagine the amount of forex that will go out. I do understand it's a little bit of a pain for your, for, for, for your business, but customer is also not paying for it. If he, has a, if he has a valid income tax process that he maintains, he will get that refund. It'll get, it, it, it basically is a part of his income. So he, they cannot be traveling. I cannot, for example, if I want to uh, do, a, do my celebration outside India, then I better pay for it. I am willing to pay and upgrade my hotel from a 300 euros to a 500 euros because I want luxury, but I'm not willing to contribute to my nation. I think that's not correct. We have, to, as a part of the nation building, so while we run our business, we also have responsibility to our nation. And a part of nation building means that we have to contribute to it. So you have to educate your customer. I don't see a reason as to why this will not happen. And a lot of people who are right now uh, engaging in talks with the government to reverse it, I can tell you right now it's going to be a no-no. Because they are going to cover a lot of their fiscal deficit. Look, imagine from a 5 lakh to a 7 lakh income tax return. If the household today has three people work earning, Seven, seven lakhs, 21 lakhs in a household comes tax-free. The additional six lakhs that comes 
do you know as per the travel port study where is going to go 83% of that will be spent on travel it will not be spent in shopping malls it will not be spent on savings and fixed deposits 83% of that additional income that india is generating through these tax reforms is going to be spent on travel so be happy about and rejoice that so don't just uh, raise a question oh my god this tcs is there and all that this is just a part of nation building you are you are in a developing economy you are you you you're, you're unfortunately not in a completely developed nation but also you're not 50 years back where india was finding it difficult to even survive so you are in a good position so rejoice that so this tcs i think is a is the right thing Five percent to twenty percent. I mean, it's a great jump, and it's really immediately hit. But it's a but it's a relative jump. No, it's not a jump from from one lakh. It's a jump from seven lakh onwards. So for seven lakhs, it is free above seven lakhs. So it's a relative jump. I think it's fully justified. As as I said, but you have to look at it from the economical lens and not from a tourism lens. Hi. Uh, I, I think I are we done? <laughs> this will keep on going. This will not finish. It is just you know like three four there and three four here, but uh, you are a great speaker, so you know everybody is admiring it. But we have other responsibilities to run around. Yes, yeah, sure. Thank I'm you. Sorry. Thank you very much. Uh, and and uh, 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 Mr. Kundu is here. Uh, uh, he is there with us today, the whole day and the evening. Please catch on with him. Speak to him, and we'll also have a session on this 20% in the second half of the day, uh, where we'll get further more insights into it. So. Thank, Thank you, you so much. And please, I request Mr. Um, Jagdeep Bhagat, the National Coordinator, Neema, to present uh, a token of appreciation from Neema, please. Mr. Naveen Kundu, Managing Director, EBX Cash, Travel Related Services, founder of Leisure Corp, Mice and Corporate Travel Company. Thank you so much. It was wonderful having you, and we had real uh, conversations about India, about rising India and advantage India, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. By the way, uh, you've been a great audience. Thank you very much. I could not expect a morning session to be so well attended. Thank you very much. Give yourself a round of applause. Thank you. <laughs>